So the plan is to play the Classical Shield Arena. It's a monthly tournament. It started just over seven hours ago. So I'm late joining. Probably don't have a shot at winning. Before I join, I want to check the um, my Lee Chess stats because I need to play more Classical Chess to appear on the leaderboards. Current rating is 2438. Um, my rating deviation needs to be below 75. Okay, so let's hop into things. Um, I'm not going to use Zen mode. I, I did have Zen mode turned on, but uh, okay. Uh, playing this person. Lower rating, but not berserking. And we have a, what do we call this? Owen's defense. We'll play d4. Something weird with my speaker thing. Sorry about that. Um, there's like a little bit of static coming in. So anyway, bishop b7 is a... Uh, I mean, usually when black plays is opening, the idea is to play this, and then if I play knight c3, then bishop b4. So I'm going to play the nozzle wasp gambit, which is bishop g5. This is an opening that sometimes is effective in bullet because people pre-move e6. But it's a way of, of preventing... Um, Pawn e6. And now I'll continue developing. I have not publicly announced my travel plans yet. I'll be announcing it soon, though. It will be somewhere internationally. I haven't played classical chess in a while. Um, I guess the last few streams I've been doing like the puzzle challenges, the puzzle world championship yesterday, which I got knocked out of pretty early. Um, before that, I was doing more blitz. So it's nice to, to play some more chill, slow chess. I'm gonna play queen e2 here. I'm delaying moving the knight because like maybe I wanna play f4, be aggressive, maybe this, this. If I play e5, it loses g2. And that might be playable, though, actually. Some funny lines to consider. So e5, take, take. Or I guess e5, first of all, if takes, 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 I fork on e, uh, I fork on e7, but then bishop takes. Yeah, maybe that's not worth going for. I'm going to play this first. Because h5 is just another possibility. And now if I play e5, this doesn't actually trap the rook. And I can focus more in the center. Yeah, and that line, um, it was probably still good for white. Just I didn't want to be losing material for nothing immediately clear. So with bishop g7... I can still consider this move and then take and then take because if black throws in this, I play rook h2 hitting the bishop and the knight. So I think most likely black would take, take knight d5. And then I have e6. It looks good on the surface, but when the center opens up and black has a double fiend cato, so I might just want to be more solid. I'm going to be solid, c3. With all these like speedrun episodes I've I've been recording, um, it's it's gotten me to play a bit more solidly lately. I'm trying to play more traditional chess, and the setup is kind of a combination of. Traditional solid center, but also some potential like kingside attack. Uh, I could play f3. I mean, I really want to prepare this. Yeah, maybe just knight f3. Taking more time. Knight f3 allows e5. And it's actually kind of hard to attack on the king side. I could castle, make the game sharp. And then go for like f3, g4. Or I could go full crazy and just play h5, take, take, take. I, 
mean, honestly, that's probably not that bad. Yeah, I'm going to go for this. We'll have a spicy game to start the, the stream. Welcome back to more people. Yeah, if you're just joining, uh, first game of the stream, playing aggressively. We'll see how well my opponent can defend this. TGIF. Thank you, Scobbin Dobbins. Happy 16 months. I think that's the first sub of the stream. I appreciate it. So yeah, black is defending. A knight's well placed here. And I'm down material. I'm down a, a rook for knight. Uh, the nice thing is I have a move here, which I think is pretty crushing. Pawn e5. Not only attacking the knight, but unleashing the bishop. And now I can take threatening checkmate black doesn't have time to take anything or does have time but will suffer consequences okay so that game kind of ended abruptly but um yeah sometimes aggressive pay aggressive play pays off um i am wondering if this was like objectively sound for white there's a line that I sometimes like to play in, uh, like London, Jobava London, that features a similar sack that's known to be good. Let's see. Plus 0.8. Was h5 the best move? Hey, h5. Okay. So I made a fair decision. One inaccuracy. Oh, my one inaccuracy was playing the nozzle loss gambit. Yeah, the idea of this opening is white sacks is the e pawn, the center pawn. And then the idea is to play pawn d5, cut off the bishop from moving back, and then attack the bishop with knight c3. So, uh, we'll keep it going. This is my 12th day in a row streaming. Happy January 12th. Actually, it's my 13th day in a row because I, I streamed the 31st as well. You heard a rumor I do 10 sit-ups before sleeping. It's been a long time since I've done a sit-up. I am on a, a different streak, though, this year that I don't think I've talked much about. Um, every day I've been walking 10,000 steps. It's a streak that I I was keeping for a few months um, in 2023. Okay, no Zen mood. I had like a 150 day streak and then, then started traveling. I lost the streak. I'm trying to rebuild it for this new year. We see E3. This is, um, this could be a lot of things. I think this is called the Van Kruijs, Van Kruijs, some K-R-U-J-I-S. Maybe White wants to go for some weird quick checkmates. I'm just going to develop normally. Um, yeah, let's control the center. This pawn's defended. Look to play bishop g4. Yeah, I don't think I'll stream every day this year. Um, I, I will probably be taking a break within the next few days. Queen g3. Hmm. That's interesting. So if I move here, then bishop b5 comes. If I move here, I lose a g pawn. The question is how to actually defend everything, reduce the pressure. I could play knight here. Blocks a bishop, but like maybe it's just the most solid move. I'm also wondering if I can just sack the g pawn, like. Bishop d6 takes rook here, 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 here. Also d4 at some point to consider. Thank you, one Sir Percival. Happy nine months. Yeah, it's kind of a weird position. Like knight here, knight here. And maybe e4. Yeah, I'm going to go for this. 
And I preserve c6, so this pin isn't really that harmful. c6 would attack the bishop. Sharma asking, are you playing the entire tournament? I think it's likely. I just started the stream. Um, two and a half hours and some change left. We see bishop e2. I mean, I could play g6. Also, now I could play this. Sack the pawn, win it back. There's also c6. I like c6 because it, it prevents any knight b5 shenanigans and it prepares this to over defend the pawn. Yeah, maybe there's some improvements, but uh, this looks solid. And if we see knight f3 or d4, I can push. Thank you, Buck and Drummer. Happy seven. I mean, I will say though, I, I don't think I've ever encountered this early, like queen f3 to g3. I'm just trying to figure out how to deal with this. It's like a weird opening causing a little bit of confusion, discomfort. And it should all be fine. I think I will go for bishop d6. Like offering the trade of g-pawns. But it's nice having the center. My pieces are... Pretty happy for the most part. At some point, I should look to move the knight and bring out the bishop. So white doesn't take the pawn. Uh, which does give me time to castle. Yeah, at some point, I'd like to go for this, but my bishop's not defended, so... I might look to play rook e8 and knight f8. King d1... A very unexpected move. I don't know if I understand the purpose of that move. Probably wasn't a mouse slip. Yeah, let's just keep doing my own thing. The plan is knight f8, defend the bishop, bring the knight here, look to play e4, activate the other bishop. Thank you, Kenny UI, with the first time prime. And thank you, Zefcat. Appreciate the raid. Shout out to Zefcat. Hope you had a good stream. Yeah, if you're just joining, um, this is my second game of the stream. Opponents doing some very unusual opening. Like, not the typical squares you usually see for white's pieces early on. I mean, mainly the king, queen, and knight are... I mean, they seem a little bit misplaced. So... Do I want to go for e4 immediately? Allows knight f4. I could also start with this. I also have this move, which almost traps a queen, but there's this or this. I'm just going to start with this. e4 was probably fine, but... I don't want this knight to have a square. I guess there is also e4, f4 there. So try and just stay flexible. Because I can also consider this move. Wait a minute, I'm just realizing the bishop is controlling h5. So knight h5 doesn't... Uh, I think I was looking at that move earlier, but it's just drop a knight. Okay, so e4, net f4. Am I winning any material? Like almost d4. Maybe I can just play simple chess, like e4, net f4, queen c7. Just increase pressure. Have the battery. Yeah, let's go for this. Oh, maybe some people realized before me that, yeah, this move would just drop a knight. So we do see another four. And yeah, the knight's pinned, so 
I don't want to like take it immediately. I think that only helps white. I think it's nice to play this move. Now there's three attackers, a bishop, queen, and knight. Only two defenders. Hey, thank you, Zayo. Ziyayo. How do I say that name? Gifting five subs. Appreciate it. Very kind. King c1. I was going to say bishop c1 would maybe be an attempt to defend. With king c1, now I'm happy to take. And the king is possibly exploited. Like if takes, I take and fork. So that's a free piece. Now it's a free queen. Maybe white should have tried knight takes this, hoping for this, and then checkmate. But uh, yeah, I would have, I would have seen the danger. Thank you, Francesco. The first time, Brian. So no mercy here. Go for this. Just looking to trade and then play along the center files. Thank you, Twight. Subbing for six months in advance. Man, a lot of people showing different ways to support. Subbing in advance, subbing with Prime, gifting subs. Thank you, everyone. Some people just being here, being a positive presence in chat. Okay, so looking to... I was looking to fork. I mean, this is still a fork, attacking the king and pawn. King e2, maybe I take on c2. There's a line king d2, I take on g2. Rook f2 looks like it traps the knight. I was going to say e3 would be a fork there. Um, with the king on e2, yeah, I prefer taking this way. So then I have knight d4, less defense of d3. 13 months. Any non-coffee or non-tea hot drink recommendations? Oh, I have a, I'm drinking tea. I'm drinking like a black apple fennel tea. Or it's black tea with like apple fennel. Uh, do I want to play this or this? Let's start with this. We'll drive the king to d3. Oh, but then... Hey, Eric. Then maybe Come this. To the Reykjavik Open this year. I'm not sure. I've gone the last two years. They did move the dates. I have this move too. A little bit spoiled for choice. Okay, let's have some fun. I'm trying with another pawn. I don't think the knight's getting trapped because I'll attack the rook and then I have knight e3. Or maybe some other moves to attack the king. Oh, welcome back, Arun. Yeah, we met at, uh, what? The last couple Reykjavik Opens. Arun gifted me the very nice, like, hand-knit Icelandic sweater, which, um, which I should wear. Like, weather's getting very cold. Weather has been getting colder in St. Louis. Um, here I have to watch out for G7. I'm going to start with f5, simply attacking, also helping defend. Just realizing I'm allowing this move. It should be okay, though, because then I have this move. And white has a lot of things hanging. Now, I mean, I could bring the knight back. Yeah, let's bring the knight back. Just want to not get too relaxed here. Um, yeah, let me try and catch up with everything in chat. Um, I, I think it's less likely I'll be going to Reykjavik Open this year, just because the dates are um, are not as convenient. But it's not a 0% chance. 
Oh, welcome back to Andrew. Shwarma asking, do you have snow where you're at? Um, we have rain. It was raining earlier today, but it wasn't too bad. It was snowing not too long ago, but there haven't been any like really bad snowstorms yet. Also, yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks for the bits, Shwarma. Thank you, Trust Chaos for the Prime, PP Porch. Okay, it's cleanup time here. I'm trying to clean up the king. Um, I guess I'm threatening. Sometimes in these positions, I still try and like challenge myself to checkmate efficiently. It can be interesting to search for the most efficient mates, like mate in two or three. I think it's made in three is what I'm threatening. I check. And then if king d4, there's check. Wait a minute. I'll start with this check. Forcing this or this. Um, check. I'm on, <laughs> not seeing like the easy force mate. Let's start with rook b5. And then queen e4. How high will it get? Oh yes, my hype train. Yeah, thanks everyone who, um, Love and I haven't been addressing everyone Rosen, yet. You're an inspiration and my girlfriend has a crush on you. Oh, that's, um, that's very flattering. I hope you don't view me as competition. Let's just take a pawn. And if takes, it's made in two. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, the pieces are, are I was going to say swarming, <laughs> swarming around. Uh, lots of shawarma in the chat. My pieces are swarming around the, the white king. Yeah, big thank you to all the new subs, PP Porch, Sea Walker, Christine gifting to Alamoth. Uh check. Oh, this is a nice mate. Rook here and then the heavy pieces doing heavy work. Okay. Do oh, my Windows update. Okay, let's just do it later. Okay, um, I'm actually curious, like sometimes it's worth just seeing what the engine wants to do in such positions. Cause there's cases where the engine will be like super, super aggressive. Just saying knight c6, but this was also possible. And then take... Level of hype train. Let's go chat. Wow, level six. It's actually pretty rare. Yeah, again, if you have Prime, you can sub for free. Thank you, the Shadow Wizard. Thank you, the usual dumb kid. So this is better for Black. Ah, Rook G4. I didn't calculate this far. And if Queen here... I mean, actually, just D4 is coming. The Knight's going to have to move. That's massive compensation for the Pawn. And then, I mean, what happened in the game was also fine. But this wasn't the best move. Knight d7. So what's the point here and then here? Ah, and then still bishop d6. Okay. Okay, some lessons to take away. Boom. Boom. I should really disable Zen mode in my settings. It's set to in-game only. Okay, opponent berserks, I berserk. We have a 10-minute game rather than the the slower classical time control. Hey, Sir Guigno. Sir, how do I say this name? Sir Guigno? Happy two months. Okay, we're going to have a King's Pawn opening here. I'll play Bishop c4. I think I'll go for the same repertoire I've been playing in the speedrun videos. 
H6, uh, I actually encountered recently in the speed run. This is usually a sign that Black is scared of some fried liver. Um, but yeah, H6 is a little bit slow. And D4, as far as I know, is the best move to try and punish Black. The strategy is just to accelerate development, castle quickly, and then play in the center. Um, it's interesting Black is leaving tension. If I take, take, I think I'd rather just castle. Have access to E1 for the Rook. Now maybe Knight D5. This looks nice. Because if Knight takes, I take back. And then, okay, well, Black gives me a Queen. No mercy. <laughs> Uh, um, I'll play bishop b5. I'll just go for simplification. I'm looking to take and then probably take and then h3. I'm leaving this pawn hanging, but now I have d5. And with bishop d3, now both knights are attacked. Cheer for the pin. Yeah, chat discovered a new type of pin, I guess. <laughs> okay. Ooh, F5. F5 is a good move. Because E4 might be coming. Whoa! Bobby Briggs. The hype train was about to expire, but Bobby Briggs coming in with the 10 gifted. Also, somehow, yeah, everything's working out for White. After it takes, I can take the bishop. And White's up a full queen. Undoubling my pawns. I guess I have to make sure the bishop can't use a jump spell. We're we're being solid here. Yeah, thanks again, Bobby Riggs. Getting us to level seven. Um let's take. Rooks can be traded. At least one pair of rooks. Thank you, Lucas Ken with the Prime. Really appreciate all the support today. Thank you, Torvald. Oh, yes. I'm going to avoid the Rook trade. I feel like this will hopefully lead to a quicker mate. Okay, Queen H8, Rook H7, and then checkmate. Okay. So... Yeah, my opponent played maybe a slightly dubious opening with h6, but then really the key mistake was giving the queen. I mean, if queen d8, I think the position is still like, manageable for black. One idea, though, was if takes, I would take back. The knight would probably have to move somewhere. Knight a5, I have bishop b5 check. The knight was back here. I was going to take, take, and take. If I lose the knight, I win the queen. The, the benefit of the file opening. Thank you, Love Soup. The prime for 17 months. So let's move on. Have another game. On Chess with the Bits. Yeah, this stream will make its way to YouTube, most likely on the Extra channel. New XM Extra. Train. Let's keep it going. Oh, thank you, Sharma. Level 8! Wow. I don't know what the record is, but uh, might be getting close. Thank you, Rhino Bump. First time prime. Finvar with the 100. A rune with the 300. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Would you recommend, 
what do you recommend against d4? I would have loved to answer that by playing my recommendation, but we have e4. I'll berserk back, and I'll play e5. Never played this opponent before. Knight e2. I feel like I've seen this move played at like Grandmaster level. I forget by who though. Lucky sub anniversary. Just attack the pawn. Thank you, Savandrius Max Tori. Yeah, this is a very unusual way to develop. Like you almost never see in King's Pawn openings. It does resemble some like chest 960 where Knight's just not on its usual square. I'm going to just try and play naturally here, go through with classical development. The issue with knight e2 is it took an extra move to develop, and, and maybe I can go for like a Ponziani idea, like c6 and then preparing d5. Thank you, Christian Christian SZ, another first time prime. Eric, how did you do in the puzzle tournament? Who ended up winning it all? Um, I, I got knocked out in like the first possible round. I had fun though. It was like a fun format. I think there were close to a hundred players competing yesterday. Also, yeah, speaking of puzzles, this, I mean, if white castles, this position might turn into a puzzle. Lack to move, find the best move. Queen. Queen H4. There's some Stafford Gambit vibes with the... Attack happening. Threatening Maiden 1. And if h3, I could start by taking the knight. I can also start by taking on f2. Or play h5. I do have to watch out for d4. Oh, so white's planning to run. But can they hide? I mean, this is an obvious move, but I mean, this is also, there's a few moves to consider here. Uh, spoiled for choice. It probably doesn't make a difference. Like, I'll I think I'll end up taking this and then this. Yeah, if the knight were on f3, then it would have been defending h2 and preventing queen h4. So important lesson to take away. Thank you, that Chai Town dude. Getting us to level nine. Wow. Gifting five. Thank you, Mikkelger. Yeah, so the Puzzle World Championship finished, I guess it was just a few hours ago. A good friend of mine, Ray Robson, actually won it. He is uh, the now five time reigning champion. They've, they've been doing it for the last five years. But I think it was pretty close. Like he was uh, he was having a very close battle against Andy Woodward. It was a runner-up. If we get to level 10, I should play the next game blindfolded. <laughs> Might depend who I play next game. Not a bad challenge though. Although I'm trying to I'm trying to like become one of the top rated classical players on Leechas. I just need to play more and try and stay clean. Get more um, get a lower rating deviation. So blindfold might not uh or it might be risky in that regard. Okay, there should be force mate here. Of, I mean, bishop anywhere I think is good enough. Bishop g3. Bishop g3. So if king here, then queen takes e4 checkmate. Yeah. Okay, no mercy. Thank you, Kyan Kyan Nidi, the three months. Kyan Kyan Idi Kyan Nidi. Sorry for maybe butchering the name. 
No mercy. Three all the way. The first time. No mercy. Yeah. I gained a rating point there. I'm going to check the database real quick. Oh, thank you. Three all the way. Gifting 10. Which guess, or gets us to level 10, right? So much hype. Now let me check this um this opening. Knight B C three. Oh, so this has been played. I'm not surprised to see Richard Report be one of the main names here. Eighteen months. That's two babies. Oh yes, my two babies. Thank you, ATC Fast. So against this move, or against knight f6. Ah, d4 is the best move. It's like a weird scotch. Maybe you could transpose. Thank you, Nick. Nick MK, Finvar, James Gifting 5. Welcome back, James Black. I think we've broke a record. I don't know if we've ever reached level 10. Um, do people actually want me to play blindfold? Blind next game. If I play blind, then I can't thank everyone who's giving their generous support, but it would be maybe an interesting challenge. Um, I'll do a quick poll. Actually, don't know what people. Oh, it might be close. If it's tied, I'll have to play with one eye closed. <laughs> no, I don't think I would do that, though. We see the the stats here. I don't think it's going to be tied unless unless there's a major comeback. I can save my blindfold for later though. Play left-handed. I do right lefty, but I'm used to using the mouse righty. Yeah, I think we'll save the blindfold for later. It is sitting on my desk. Nice, cozy. I mean, it's supposed to be a sleeping mask, but it does a good job of um, obstructing vision. Do you kick a ball with the left? Well, it, it depends on the situation. I'm capable of kicking a ball with both feet. I'm probably a bit more accurate and dominant with my right. I play mo most sports righty. Tennis, ping pong, throwing a ball. I throw a frisbee lefty, though. Those are just different things with different hands. I usually drink lefty, too. Oh, there was a question how I would play blindfolded. Um, there's a setting on Leech to type my moves and then also hear which moves are being played. So, new game. Uh, I'll play e4. That's yeah, 58% prefer not to have a blindfold. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll play aggressively still. I'm playing a Scandinavian. If queen a5, then I'll play the, um, oh, queen e6. Queen e6 is a move. Or no. No, queen e6, I mean, it's a legal move, but it's uh, probably not a great move. There's a line that some grandmasters will play, which is queen e5. The idea to follow up with bishop g4. But with a queen on e6, it's just blocking everything. Blocks a pawn, which blocks a bishop. Also locks his bishop. And what well, was not worth attacking the king for one move? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. John Brown, welcome back. So I'm leaving, was leaving the tension between the knights. I don't mind the double pawns. This pawn gets closer to the center. Can expand with c4. Man, I'm looking for ways to set up bishop b5, but. Yeah, I think I prefer c4, just grabbing space. Maybe d5 someday. 
Oh no, my blindfold game. Yeah, I'll, I'll save the blindfold for later. Uh, maybe in a a slightly faster game, because it can be hard to be blindfolded for a classical game, which could take like upwards of forty minutes or more. Okay, the queen continues to move. So if I castle, there is bishop h3, knight h4. That's a little bit weird. Should be fine for me, though. I can also consider playing knight e5, losing the pawn, going for compensation. I like the idea of this, this though. Like bishop h3, knight h4 will defend and attack. There is a line I was calculating. Bishop h3, knight h4, queen f6, bishop f3. I don't know how good it is, but the idea would be if takes, takes, I win the rook. I don't think I would go insane if there was a a 40 minute blindfold game. I would just be deprived of light for a little bit. Also, yeah, the hype train is officially over. So thanks everyone. Made it to uh, a pretty high level. We see bishop to g4. If I play knight e5 and then take and then take. Actually, if knight e5 takes, 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 takes is possible. There's also knight e5 take and then just take back with queen. And it feels like for half the game, black has just been moving the queen. ATC Foss was asking, oh, asking about the line I was calculating. I can address that later. Yeah, here I don't think I want to go for this because after takes, takes, even though I win the rook, and I'll be up to exchange, it's likely the knight will be trapped. And this is just way more simple. I keep queens on the board, which should favor white just because the black king should be more of a target than the white king. Oh, there's a question. Anyone know when Eric is competing again in a tournament? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be announcing more details in my next stream. Just have to find the proper website to, to share in the um, the event info. So this pawn's attacked. I could defend like moves. There's a lot of like natural moves to defend, but I like the prospect of counterattacking. Queen f3 would hit this and this. I don't see a way for black to defend both. Like even. Even though taking a taxis in this, it's going to walk into big trouble. Yeah, so black defends b7. I wonder if my opponent realized f7 is also attacked. And it's tempting to take with queen and just try and exploit the king, but I think it's just better to take with knight, cashing in on the material. And then if queen takes, attack my rook, I can play bishop e3, defending, attacking, and then preserving knight takes rook. And yeah, here I'll trade queens. Do I want to trade queens? I can also take first... So if I trade, g takes, takes, bishop g7, my knight's trapped. I think my knight will get trapped regardless. If I take here, there's takes, takes, g6. Just wondering if there's any chance to save the knight. Maybe there is, actually. 
yeah, let's uh, let's go for this. So I'm accepting the double pawns, which isn't really a bad thing. Just given the material situation. I'm also giving black a chance to take, and then I would have queen f7. Thank you, Stimmet, for the three months. Yeah, so black is probably going to go for g6. It's the quickest way to attack the knight. And now there's a couple ideas for me. First thing I saw was rook here attacking, and then if this, I have this, and then this, I have this. And I defend the knight through x-ray vision. I could also play bishop uh, f4, idea bishop e5. We'll start with rook b1, and then probably decide between this, this, or this. I'm really treating this as a challenge to rescue my knight. I could just give it up and then still be on material, but yeah, I'm going to go for pawn d5. So opening the diagonal, preparing this move. I'm not going for this and this because there is knight d7 to control e5. Now, the knight still might get trapped. Like, black could just take and then walk the king over. But if takes the knight, yeah, then I take back. So this is x-ray vision I was talking about. Hey, okay, it's Ember. news to share. I found out this on Wednesday that my local chess club started meeting again in January, so I showed Ooh. up that night. It's every Wednesday night. I played just one opponent, but I won every single game. Hey, let's go. My first wins in the club. Congratulations, Ember. That's nice to hear. It's always nice to like play in real life in the third dimension. I hope you can keep it up. Yeah, I appreciate the dono too. Welcome back. So, okay, I have triple, triple pawns, which are social distancing. Double pawns. Bishop does prevent knight e5, discourages knight f6. Knight c5, so I mean, black probably just wants to win the c6 pawn. So I think the best way to save the c6 pawn is to make it a c7 pawn. I mean, the knight can move here, but then we can trade. Considering c5 or a4. Let's go with rookie one. Aligning with the king. So if knight takes, then maybe bishop d6. And now the pawn is pinned and attacked twice. Yeah, that attacks the bishop, and I can't take with the rook because I lose the bishop, so let's take on e7. And the goal from here is to get the rooks involved. Either create a mating net or start winning pawns. Go back to a3. So if Vak loses this pawn, I have rook here to win the knight. It's already like looking close to checkmate. King's gonna have to move this way. If King c6, I have rook d6. Or maybe I start with this. Yeah, like sometimes in these spots, the best move is not to actually attack the king directly, but it's more to restrict the king. Because I'm already controlling these squares and this square, and now I'm controlling these squares. So all I need to do is play this move. 
Okay. So got the job done efficiently there. Um, yeah, going back in this game, I think Black spent a little bit too much time moving the queen. And then it eventually led to some tactical scenario. You know, Black was castled and developed then, and probably it would be a bit more difficult for me. So um, I guess I I wanted to make a brief point that in this line, um, there's a sideline. Like the main moves are queen a5, queen d6, and queen d8. Uh, but at a, a like very high level, like sometimes this move is tried. Uh, Shimanov is maybe one of the most frequent practitioners of this uh, this line. Shimanov is a former teammate of mine. We went to uh, to university together. Uh, and the idea is after bishop e2 to play bishop g4. But this should still be like preferable for white. Black gets a trade. Queen has to move again. Who are you rooting for to go to the Super Bowl? Don't be afraid to announce that Lamar and the Baltimore Ravens are the best team in the NFL. Quack quack. Wait, what? It's weird. When the TTS comes in, it's like... um. I think it's fine on stream, but like it was hard to hear. It went super quiet for a moment. Shawarma asking about Super Bowl. I don't even know who's playing the Super Bowl. I, I really don't follow football. Is it coming up soon? I should say I don't follow American football because football usually refers to soccer for people outside the US. Um, but yeah, like the last few years I have not watched the Super Bowl. I don't really like have, I, I don't pay for cable TV. I consume most of my content in the form of like podcasts or YouTube videos or audiobooks. Um, let's move on. I've never even like attended a professional football game. Maybe even college game. I attended a hockey game uh maybe last year. I saw the St. Louis Blues. I've watched professional tennis too. I saw Roger Federer play in person. Thank you, Landrum. checks for nearly two years of coaching. Welcome back. Happy 21. Let's berserk and let's play. Let's play um, a Sicilian. We have knight of three. Okay. Um, I usually play e6. I'll play knight c6 here. And if we have an open Sicilian, then I'll play a an accelerated dragon which is uh, g6 in this position. Uh, the main dragon is usually without knight c6 and employs a setup with the early knight f6 and d6. I guess they call this accelerated dragon because you get the bishop to g7 sooner. And with delaying pawn d6, there's cases where I can play pawn d5 in one go. Okay, so white's trying to be solid. Develop. Yeah, I don't follow tennis too closely. I'm aware that the Australian Open has started or is starting. Might have to, to activate my tennis or whatever ESPN subscription to watch it. So knight d2. That's not the most like aggressive setup from white. I'm wondering if I can be ambitious here, like d5 is a consideration. The thing about d5, okay, it attacks the pawn, but it also unleashes my bishop and supports knight g4. So like d5, e5, knight g4, and then I'm hitting the bishop and the pawn. 
I'm just wondering about takes and then takes. Because if I take with this pawn, there's bishop b5 check. Oh, but then I have bishop d7. Yeah, d5 looks like the way to go. Just trying to attack white when they're a little bit on the back foot. Yeah, I'm having some weird thing with the, um, like my earbud. There's all this static. I don't think it's affecting anyone in chat, which is good. Um, every day for last, uh, actually for the last 12 days, every day this year, um, usually after I stream, I, I turn my desk into a standing desk and it usually involves like moving around the speaker and headphone cables, uh, making sure the wires don't get stretched. And I have a little, uh, it's called a walking pad. I, um, I get some work done while. Uh, by walking, basically. And I think whatever I did, like, affected the, the cable. Okay, so queen c2. Reinforcing the pawn. I could play knight g4. Knight g4, a bishop will move. Eric, keep up the 2024 stream streak until February. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm traveling soon, so I've there might be a day where I just won't have like good internet connection. I'm going for this move. Imagining like if the bishop moves here, I can expand further with e5. Bishop moves here. Ideas of queen b6 too. Stream while playing chess and subs and bits increase your pace. <laughs> will get you in top tier tennis shape. At some point, I might experiment with doing a walking stream. Um, I mean, let's figure out what to do here, because bishop f4, queen b6 hits the pawn, bishop g3 will defend, Hi, Eric. rook b2 just hit this. I video at the Chesper house with Fobby playing blindfold and Hanson and Bock in the background. Ah. Fun times. Wait, was I in that one too? Because I, I was in one of them with Bobby playing blindfold. And there was a whole like confusion with me like telling him the wrong moves. Uh, this was a few years ago. I'm not sure if it makes a big difference here. I'm reluctant to play e5 because it blocks in this bishop, even though it grabs the center. So, yeah, let's play queen b6. Basically forcing the bishop back. I'm a little bit curious about bishop e5 here. Because I'm threatening to take and then queen f2. And there's also like h5, h4. I could start with rook b8. Wait, rook b8 just drops it. Or does it? Wait, no. Rook b8, I'm completely oblivious to the bishop, but white wouldn't be able to take it because then I take on f2. But white could play b3. Like, I don't think I want to put my rook there. Let's look at bishop e5, knight f3. That might work actually. So bishop e5, knight f3, I take, take, take. If queen takes, I take this, hitting this and this. Bishop e5, if takes, I take king d1, knight e3. f4, there's queen e3 or knight e3. Or even bishop takes f4. I'm going to do this. It took me some time to play that move, but... I don't quite see what white's doing in response. H3 I take and then F2 is going to fall. Sharma says, I'll give you 1k bits if you sack your queen by move 13 and win. That's in the next two moves. 
if it's viable, maybe I'll consider it. But um, if it's completely lost, it's probably probably not worth it. We'll see, though. Welcome back to Joe Brune. Shout out to Joe Brune. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, so with this um with this walking pad that I have, the the top pace is only 3.7 miles per hour. Speed runs have been celebratory hands in the air. Celebratory hands in the ah, air. Celebratory hey, hands celebrating in the hands air. in the air. Thank you. Oh, yes, my celebratory hands. Yeah, I'm still in the process of like testing all the tech setup with walking and streaming and it's like the machine is a little bit loud because it's kind of like a treadmill um so it's a matter of having like reasonable audio it'd be nice to like share the stats on on the stream with like distance and distance pace calories burned etc Oh, thank you, FB3 the third, gifting to Joe Brune. Do you think one could get to 2300 blitz without classical chess training? Um, it would probably be more difficult. Sometimes a way to get better at fast chess is to actually get good at slow chess first. Because that that's what actually helps build your intuition. You see knight b3. Which blocks my queen, so maybe I'm not winning. Or am I winning something? Because takes... No, I can still take. I'm also realizing the, the line I was calculating, if the knight were here, I would still take and then take on f2. I, think I was only looking at b2. But yeah, basically the queen was overworked. It was defending e4 and f2. And I can't afford to take here. So I am winning a pawn. It's nice having the pawn here. Allow for e3 or maybe even bishop f5 followed by e3. Thank you, Elliot Anderson Jess. With the raid, I appreciate it. Okay, so we see bishop to c4. Um... Bishop f5 is my first thought. Bishop f5, there's knight d4, though. And e3. Right, let me try and calculate here. I might just go for it, though. I have to move a little bit more quickly. Thank you, pie hole. Wow, 58 wow. months. Should I go for 59? You're, you're very close. Just one month away. It's uh, one of the OGs. Welcome back to Pi Hole. Okay, so Queenie 2, I have 95. Yeah, the position is pretty well controlled. Still a matter of managing time. Not sure which way I want to castle, or if I even want to castle. The king is pretty safe in the center. Okay, now I could castle king side and not worry about the h file. Um, I don't think I want to take the bishop. Yeah, let's castle. And the bishop's not really going anywhere. If knight d4, then I can probably take and then take. Okay, let's go for rook. Rook d8. I'm leaving this rook here more for safety than anything else. I'm sure rook f8 was also fine. There's ideas of knight d3. A nice square in white's position. Should also maybe consider c5 to prevent knight d4. Okay, 
Yeah, for now, I'm trying to just anticipate what I'm doing after knight d4. There's bishop g4, actually, which perhaps is more attractive. But also, also requires some calculation. I'm up on time. A knight d4, bishop g4, and then queen takes e4. And if I take, there's takes. I win b2. c6 is hanging as well as e7. Yeah, I probably don't want to go for bishop g4. And this is ugly, although maybe it's fine. Yeah, actually, e6, like the more I'm looking at it. Wow. 23 months. Wow. Should I go for 24? Smile. You're really close. You're just one month away. Make it two years. Welcome back, Gelatinous Cube. If takes takes, I'm close to some kind of pawn cube type thing. Although if takes, I probably take back with this pawn. Yeah. Just having a very, very solid structure. Connect four. Now there is... Let's see four hangs a pawn though. Let's start with this. Then bishop c4. Yeah, bishop c4 I can take on b2 maybe. I'm trying to calculate. Bishop c4, take, 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 rook b1. I have rook b8. Um, now let's just move back. Repeating once. Okay, b3. Rook d6 comes to mind. Go for this. c3 could be a target. Ooh, so the bishop has established itself. I might look to sack. We both have like some outposts in each other's territory. Discouraging B4. This move. G4 is very resourceful. And hey, maybe now it's time to sack. Take, take, F4. Yeah, let's go for this. A knight should be as strong as a rook. Wow. Full rook worth wow. Go, Eric. Thank you, Mark Jade Turner. Happy one year. Thank you, Yasser, also. Yasser89. First time sub. White wants to play f3, but the pawn's pinned. King and queen are tied down to defending. Uh, f3 doesn't really accomplish much. I'll take the pawn. Probably. Actually, maybe just move back. Loving the slow chess content. Maybe here first. F3 might be coming though. Also, thanks for the words. Stacy Chess. I have C4 as well. I'm trying to figure out what to do here. You see four. Okay, so white sacks. So I'll be up a pawn. Maybe two. I might as well take here. I do miss my knight. My knight was so powerful, but it's uh, the nature of position transforming. A queen e2 is nice. Attacks this, ties down the queen to defending the rook. White counterattacks a pawn. H5. 
Maybe looking to play f3. I'm going to put my queen on e5. Just a nice solid square. If the queen trade happens, it's rook and four versus rook and two. It should be a pretty straightforward win. And yeah, I'm just going to try and trade queens. White's avoiding it. Keep poking and prodding. F3. Let's go for this first. I do have to watch time. Maybe this. Mm, yeah, this first. Okay, now we trade. I'll create a structure where the, everything will be defended within my pawns. Collision. Less than three goth brilliant chess comp or Nimros and let's go. Let's rock go. On gesture, cool face. Rock on gesture. Imros and let's go. Chess comp or goth brilliant. Less than three. Collision. Hopefully I can convert this. And G4 coming. Threading this now. Okay. <sighs> Thank you, Trocar. Yeah, sometimes TTS likes to just read out all the emotes. Thank you, Hot Elk. Welcome back. Thank you, Gary, with a thousand bits. Really appreciate all the, the nice support and energy today. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a long fight. Wait, did I hear a game start? Game didn't start, did it? Oh, let's pause. Pause. Okay. Thank you, AKD, with a 500. Uh, bear with me, because yeah, I, I do want to check this game real quick. I mean, I think the opening was was really nice. Like, I got the, the center. Sometimes it's a mistake for white to trade early, because it gives black another pawn that's closer to the center. And... Oh, I guess I forgot about the challenge to sack my queen by move 13. But there is no realistic way to do so. Uh, to, to do so and then try and win against this opponent. I think everything was pretty solid. Although here, wait, I was worse. Ah, white had f3 in this position. Wow, so my, my whole structure could have crumbled. White took this way, and then, yeah, then it was preferable for black again. Toronto chess lover. Oh, is asking any plans to visit Toronto again? Yeah, I was there last year for the CC, CGC, GCC, Global Chess Championships. Um, I'm not sure when I'll come back. A chance this year, maybe? I have to wait and see. So, uh, we'll keep it going. Move on to another game. Let me check my stats. My rating deviation is slowly going down. Started at 98 or 99. 
rejoin the tournament. Can you play e4, f6? I don't think I want to stoop that low, especially for an instructive classical stream. I can try and mix up the openings though. Oh, you missed me playing tennis on stream. Yeah, the weather has been really cold recently. It's not been tennis friendly. Someday, hopefully, I'll, I'll stream tennis again. Okay. Playing Naughtiest UK Civilian. Opponent resigns. That's a... Is that Naughty resigning before the game begins? I gained 12 points for that. What? I gained 12 points for not doing a single move? Maybe it's their arena strategy. Okay. Yeah, they're they're in sixth place. And I guess they're trying to win the tournament, so they didn't want to have a long game. Although, there should be rules against that for arenas. Anyway, I'm uh, now almost in the top 100. I was maybe slightly, slightly better there, the white pieces. Playing SKW. Okay, let's try this again. I'll play D4. Played E4 a few times. Back to the, the bread and butter, London opening, pawn E3. We'll go for what is one of the main lines. Bishop g3. a6. So usually the main move is castling. And then after castling, I like to play bishop b5. But with bishop b5 prevented, I think I'll just go for bishop d3. This is usually where the bishop goes anyway in London. So I'm trying to, to figure it out because it's as if black castled bishop d3 and then a6. And a6 is definitely not the most common move. Like usually it's queen e7, maybe sometimes rook e8. So I'm going to play a move here, queen e2, really just trying to stay flexible. I didn't want to commit to castling because there's cases where if we trade bishops, the rook wants to be on the h-file. And with the trade of pawns, it's nice having the queen here because it supports e5, support knight e5 probably. Question, why do you play c4 so rarely? Uh, c4 on move one or on move two in a queen's pawn opening? Because when I play queen's pawn, it's um, I'm just more, more comfortable, more prepared than the London. But I sometimes do play the English opening once in a while. I probably play it more in like or like serious, especially over the board games. So bishop b7. I mean knight f3 looks solid. Reinforcing. There are ideas of attacking like h4, knight g5. It's kind of tempting here to play h4. Black is maybe going for b4, like try and induce some weakness. I'm going to go for h4. Have a more aggressive approach in the London. Why no berserk? For this tournament, I'm only berserking if my opponent berserks. Because the goal, the goal is not to like win the tournament because I, I late joined, but the goal is to have time to chill to explain my moves, have the increment. B4, so there's no immediate threat. Like we could trade. I think I'll do my own thing. I guess maybe that can take and queen a5 and exert pressure. 
Yeah, so now there's this move bishop h4. Which I kind of like the looks of. Pinning the knight, maybe provoking bishop e7. And then the idea would be to play g4. And then g5, open the g-file, maybe rook g1. Let's go for it. Like very often when you're trying to orchestrate a kingside attack, whenever black commits to this move h6, then it enables a, the possible pawn break with g4, g5. And if the g5 opens, that can bode very well for my attacking chances. Okay, so we do trade pawns. And it's possible black will just abandon the knight and go after this. But yeah, at least like going forward, I'm very focused on the king side. I have all the minor pieces kind of directed towards this side. I'll probably end up not caring about material. Which could backfire, but... Let's calculate. Okay, so this, 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 g5. Take, take. Maybe I should defend c3. Oops. Hopefully the mic's okay. I was thinking there's another idea to somehow somehow form the battery, but yeah, that would just allow 94. So there's a line I'm looking at here. So g4, I think the biggest concern is knight takes. I'm wondering if I can take with pawn. I'm like, again, knight e4, knight takes g4. Not so simple. Maybe I should start with a move like rook c1. It feels slow, but it defends the pawn. And rook's not doing anything. I do have to watch out for the pin, but I mean, for the time being, the d4 pawn is defended by the knight. I guess the other idea to consider is to take and then g4, but also seems kind of slow. I'm going to play rook c1. A nice thing about this move is if I have the chance to move back the bishop, I can play bishop b1. I'm not blocking in the rook in the corner. Yeah, this game is not going to be like a simple attack as I, I was initially hoping for. At some point, I might have to cast one and just focus in the center. But we'll see what Black does. Okay, so knight a5. Unleashing the rook. Maybe going for knight c4. Also unleashing the bishop. So knight e4 is actually an idea as well. I might just take, it seems like a big concession, but I don't like the prospect of knight e4 to exert more pressure to offer the trade of bishops. It feels like this bishop is just meant to be traded to. Now let's go for this. And I guess one reason I'm going for this is because there's a a somewhat concrete idea of bishop b1, and now I'm threatening queen d3. And because the knight is no longer here, uh, it's not actually easy for black to defend h7 if I do get the queen to this diagonal. That's a nice thing about having the pawn here too. And black's, I guess black is allowing for f5, but 
Let's take with knight. So it would be nice if queen d3 would force f5. f5 comes right away. So some transformation. Uh, the bishop is no longer like that useful of a piece, unless I want to go for g4, which is maybe an idea. Because I have to watch out for queen g5 hitting the rook. I mean, a move like knight g6 comes to mind. Outpost square that will attack the rook, unleash the queen. If I play this, then probably this or this. Another idea took me, took me some time to even consider this, but it's to play rook h3 and rook g3. I guess the first step is to kind of address address if I can allow queen g5. So this is annoying attacking the rook. Rook's tied down to defending the pawn. So let's imagine rook h3, queen g5. What do I do? I don't really want to trade queens, even though it's probably fine. I don't really want to play rook c2, which blocks a bishop. And there's knight d3 there. I'm thinking maybe it's worth playing f4 first. Simply preventing queen g5. Blockading the pawn. And then I can maybe choose whether to go for g4 or rook lift. I'm slowing down here, really trying to to come up with the best approach. Yeah, the more I'm looking at f4, the more I'm liking it. So if black goes for knight c4, I can take and then win the pawn with check. And yeah, if this pawn falls and the other pawns can crumble. Okay. And this also combines well with my bishop. Like, with both of us having light squared bishops, then we're basically both striving to have our pawns on dark squares. Now, box pawns are fixed on light squares. Black goes for this anyway. So, like, if I take, it might not be worth worth it for me to take because it really opens up the bishop. But then I take here with check. Oh, I have a, I have a tough choice. And it should be a good spot to be, like, to decide whether I want to win the pawn or try and keep my domination here. Like, initially I thought, okay, it's very simple, but the more I'm looking at this, like, takes, 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 let's say king h8... I can't take on f5 because there's rook e8 with a pin. And then I have to deal with g2 hanging. Maybe rook f6 coming. Or rook e8 coming. So I guess the line to calculate is takes, 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 king h8, and then castling. Is f5 still vulnerable? I'm going to have to compare that to a line where I just slow play, like rook h3, maybe allow takes, get the queen to e5. And there are two very different types of positions. And this is a bit harder to, I mean, at least work h3 is a bit harder to calculate concretely. So after takes, I mean, I'd want to keep the e-file open for me. 
queen f6. In position, it looks good, but this is a backwards pawn. Easy for black to defend e6. Yeah, right now I'm leaning towards taking the knight. But it's a very critical moment, because whatever I do here it will kind of determine the, the, the structure going forward. So it takes, not scared of rook takes, it's more the pawn taking, the bishop opening up. I take and king h8 and then castle. So I defend this, I I prevent rook e8 because then I can take here. And if rook f6, rook f6 maybe queen e5. I'm still threatening f5. I'm scared of queen h4 in that line. Probably not. Okay, I'm going to go for this. My original intention is just not as clear as I initially thought. But it still looks good. I mean, this bishop is still actually very good on b1. So f5 is going to be a, a constant target. And like one of the main concerns is black getting play against g2, but I mean, even, even if the queen and bishop line up on this diagonal, it can very easily defend. It's very hard for black to lift a rook over with this pawn here. So black's taking time, maybe considering rook takes, which would keep the bishop closed, but keep the c file open. So we'll see what my opponent wants. Okay, so I'll take. Yeah, if we see rook f7, then maybe I'd be able to take on f5. Here I'm going to castle. And castling pretty late, like usually you're supposed to castle within the first 10 moves. This is move 24. Yeah, black has choices here. It was kind of hard to calculate beyond this position. Bishop d5, okay, so allowing me to take a pawn, but I probably want to make sure my queen has a happy place. I kind of like the idea of queen e5. Where it exerts constant pressure against the bishop in the pawn. I guess queen e5 is likely to be met with queen d7. I'm actually trying to calculate like queen e5, queen d7. I play rook ce1. It looks like my queen gets trapped after rook ce8. But then I have bishop takes f5. Does that work? I counterattack the queen. Rook can't rook can't take. If the queen takes, I just take back, and this rook is overworked. I think it's okay. Like it looks risky, but yeah, the tactics seem to work out. It's just if I'm missing something, then it could be really bad, but let's look at this one more time. Queen e5, queen d7, see, I'd be attacking the pawn, and then rook c e1. Yeah, I don't think this works because of bishop f5. Queen b7 is a move there. A queen b7 will maybe allow this. So I'm calculating uh, queen e5, queen d7, rook e1, queen b7, bishop takes f5, bishop takes g2. And then I can probably choose between taking or bishop e4. Yeah, let's go for this. Like, there's pros and cons to keeping the queen here. 
And the pro is it it targets a lot of things in black's position, but the con is that it doesn't have too much mobility from e5. Yeah, like rook rook e8 almost traps the queen. Like the only move would be queen f5, which is thankfully a very strong, just crushing move. It's crazy to have the queen in the center and have it be almost trapped. So opponent has a huge time advantage. Spending some of it now. We might see a long think here. Yeah, queen h4 was possible earlier. But uh, yeah, queen side down to the bishop. I guess I should double check this one more time. Rook e8, bishop takes f5. Queen takes, takes. If rook takes, I take. Rook takes, I take. Okay, so rook e1. Yeah, it's nice having the, the battery on this file. Is Let's say black does nothing, like a5, then I can look to play queen e7. A queen trade would probably be nice for me. Thank you. Too late to caffeinate. Is it ever too late to caffeinate? I think there's a little bit of caffeine in my tea, actually. Drinking black tea. Oh, too late to caffeinate sub for three months in advance. Appreciate that. Don't caffeinate after 10 p.m. Yeah, that's probably good life advice. Unless you work a night shift. Or maybe a bishop shift. I will have a lot to analyze after the game. It's definitely the longest thing for my opponent this game. They they played the opening very quickly. Wow, we see rookie eight. So I mean I have to go for this. I Oh, did I miss I miss Queen C six? Ooh. I think I did miss something very important. Uh-oh. And my opponent's going to find it too. Oh, this is not good. Yeah, it's like a quiet move. I looked at all the captures. I didn't look at the quiet move. Okay. Oh, well, now we're getting some oh no my queen. Bishop g6. Oh, well, my queen's actually trapped. I, I was just spending a lot of time like looking for how black can trap the queen. Yeah, this didn't work at all. Like even queen b7 probably was fine too. And the sad thing is, like, I can't even play bishop e6 and my queen is still trapped. So, I mean, on the bright side, I am getting a rook for it. But I'm in big, big trouble here. I have to play like bishop g6. Probably bishop. The bishop e4 doesn't work. Bishop d7 doesn't work. Okay. Oh, uh, that was 
That was careless on my part, but I'll do my best to fight. I'll have at least some center pawns, but black has such a solid battery that, yeah, it's going to be tough. I wonder if this is possible. No need for black to even consider that. Oh no, my queen. So I have rook and two pawns for queen. Which will hopefully allow for some interesting battle. I mean, probably more interesting for my opponent. And if takes takes, then at least I'm threatening some back rank check. If the rook avoids the trade, I'm actually not sure what to expect from black here. Which is hopefully a good thing. It means that my opponent has some decision to make. And ideally, I'd like to get the pawn to e7. It would be nice. Like, if I get the pawn to e7, then setting up ideas of rook f8. I may be lacking a queen, but I have a lot of future queens. Or potential future queens, I should say. Yeah, this game is far from over. And this could be a very long fight. Reminds me of a game... There's an over-the-board tournament game I played last year in Iceland at the Reykjavik Open. And I had, like blundered my queen in the middle game. I got rook and a couple pawns, maybe rook and two pawns for it as well. It ended up being like a super long struggle. So yeah, a lot of players might blunder and then tilt and then just uh, crumble even quicker, but it's good to good to try and fight as much as possible. Opponent still has a lot of time, and they're they're definitely taking their time. Like maybe, uh, yeah, it's weird when the position goes from what should have been better for white to now being like very close to winning for black, but still a little bit tricky. Sometimes it's hard to adjust. I'm also realizing like queen b7 would not have been as good, I don't think, because queen d6. So queen c6 was accurate. Thank you, Tainted Memories. Appreciate the, the first time, Prime. Yeah, this is a stage of the game where I'm um I'm not gonna be looking at chat. I'm going to try and just stay focused. I'm in in a lot of trouble here. I don't even want to think about the number of rating points I would lose. I lose or even draw this game. I mean, there's still like some outside chance to win. But the first step is not uh, not losing more things. I really don't see a way for Locke to effectively win G2. It'd be nice if we see takes on g2 immediately, or takes, takes, and then takes, because, yeah, rook f8 would be mate. I'm controlling e8, so... I mean, I don't want to be, like, thinking out loud for my opponent, but... Yeah, we'll see what they come up with. Okay, so, yeah, happy to get the rook to open file. Yeah, this is probably one of the, the better sequences. I think I have to play this. Like, what else to consider? There is this move, actually. Um, there's also this move. Okay, a few, few choices. There's definitely some downsides with both moves. So I'm trying to figure out which move actually puts up the most resistance. Play there, there, there. Yeah, not really seeing an attractive option here, unfortunately. 
Yeah, the, the queen is just going to be too powerful. Might as well try this, and yeah, we'll see what my opponent comes up with. Nice thing about this, it defends a few of the weaknesses in the position. A5, okay. I mean, one problem is I don't have a plan, though. Black has easy moves to improve. Now I could consider rook b2. Allow the king to come in. Is rook e2, bishop. Uh, what do I want to go for? I'm like trying to really look for all my ideas, but black is so solid here. Two, maybe just king h2. It's kind of a sad move, but what else to do? I'm thinking of this side, then I play a3. Also, not so attractive, but maybe there's some merit. I mean, king h2 is really just a waiting move. Maybe I want to expand, but probably just seeing what black is up to. And keeping the king cut off. Yeah, the drawback with this move is that yeah, these pawns could both be weak. Uh, there is the idea of putting the rook on b4. You know this move. I think I should start with bishop f7. Just want to make sure e6 or d5. Now let's start with this. Maybe something like rook b2 now. The king is a little bit boxed in. These pawns, at least these pawns, do a good job of preventing the queen from attacking a3. We see g5. Okay, so I have en passant, which I probably should go for. En passant d5. Hmm. It might not work though, but like what else to do? I play rook b4. Take, take.
I think I have to go for taking. Just. Yeah. Not what I wanted. So calculation is takes and then here and then here and then take and then take and then rook d2, which doesn't work, unfortunately. Who's e6? Oh, e6 doesn't work either. So what about d5? Some variation. I think I have to try d5. So I have the two passers. I'm also realizing like if here I could consider this move too. Like weirdly tricky. Maybe there's still hope. And there is a 10 second increment, so. And this isn't huge time trouble. Queen d7, I have Bishop e6. Queen h4. Hmm. What's up, Eric? Greetings from Germany. What's up? Trying to stay focused here. E6 doesn't work. I think bishop e6 is my best try. Still a lot of work to do. There's some weird line where, like, maybe I squeak out a draw. I, I do see one potential drawing line. I think I'm still, like, in big trouble, though. I really thought we were going to trade bishops and black would just clean up, but it's good to save bishops, save my pawns. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. I think I'm going to play King G1 here. So I am allowing Queen takes pawn, but then... And this is basically the drawing line, because I... I don't think black can really escape the perpetual, unless I'm wrong. I mean, if queen c5, then probably, probably king h1. Also, my watch died. Uh, I don't know when it died, but it's probably shown my heart rate at 109 for a long time. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me charge it. Let's get rid of this uh, overlay. Okay. H5. Hmm. That's a very smart move. Making, uh, making some getaway for the king. I think I can play this, though. Hmm. 
one issue. Might have to play rook a2. It's such a sad move. Rook a2 doesn't do much though. Okay, this is this is the best I see. There there is an issue here before I'll I'll address after the game. It's really sad to play this move, but what to do? I mean rook f two takes don't think I can afford that. Yeah, it all crumbles here. Maybe I should have tried rook before. Yeah, not much hope here, but uh, you never know. I never know. G4. Hmm. It's basically rook for queen now. This pawn's not doing much. Imagine black will, will share proper technique or show proper technique. Okay, that wasn't as expected. Maybe G3. It's still an issue though. Have this. I see one potential trick. Okay. Um, 
Thinks my rook's coming off the thing. Queen d6, I'll repeat. I wouldn't mind that. Bishop f5, yeah. Take. Try taking and push. I mean, I still have some hope. Rook's defended, supports the pawn, queen d7. Um, this move. Might have to calculate some king pawn ending coming up. I have no time though. Yeah, there's another trick. First of all, if this I think I just take half of that. Play this. And just move back. It's been a while since I subscribed to you. I hope you're having a great day. Um, it's stressful so far. It's pretty stressful. The pawn can't be taken. I mean, Bach found this idea to get the king to d8, but at least still there's an ounce of hope. Better not be blundering the rook here. I mean, if I am, I, I don't see how black wins it. Yeah, I have to make a fortress. Uh, 
it's very close to being okay now. I just need to get the rook here. Yeah, being extra careful, making sure there's no weird pin. But once I get the rook to f3, I think it's just a, a draw. I might get tortured a little bit, but... Um, yeah, this should be a draw. I think I just move the rook back and forth. Like even if the king comes in. Like, even if black had a pawn on f or h files, actually, on the f file, maybe it's winning because the queen can sack for the rook. But otherwise, okay, I, I should be I should be safe. Um, I could I could probably just pre-move like rook h three rook f three. Um, it's tempting to do this to set up that, but let's let's be civil. Actually, let's just keep the king. I'll just leave the rook on f three. We might play out all 50 moves. We might see the queen sack itself. I hope I'm not like misjudging this and Black's winning somehow, though. I just don't see how Black can force a Zugzwang, like even, even here, and just move this way. If king, okay, if king there, yeah, check. In here. So I'll, I'll probably only lose like 30 rating points for this game. <laughs> Still a lot, but it could be worse. Yeah, rook f3. Again, like if I want to, I maybe could get away with rook h7, but being extra, extra careful. Yeah, Black was really close to winning this game. I mean, opponent found some good moves, found the queen trap. Just, um, yeah, misplayed things a little bit in the end game. I won't be surprised if we see like a, a 50 move rule. Thank you, Sith Bladder, the first time sub. Yeah, I'm remembering um, actually seeing a chess puzzle. I think it was in the book Imagination in Chess. Maybe it's in other books too. But Black has a pawn in F4. Like the only winning idea is to sack the queen on f3. But yeah, without the pawn, then it's it should just be a draw. Do I take the draw? Is there any way for black to blunder here? I'll, I'll let black play the next move. We're going to see king f5. <laughs> I'm in no danger. Okay, now I can. Keep being oh, yeah. Great. We draw by repetition rather than accepting. Do! Oh, a new game started. I wanted to. Did I really have the tournament open in a different tab? 
I lost 22 rating points for that. Okay. I guess I'll play one more game. I can't afford it because it's a tournament. Um, I'll play e5. Maybe I'll try and I'll try and play more aggressively here. Oh no, my analysis. Okay, after this game, I'm I'm not rejoining the tournament. Can I pause the tournament mid-game? Pause. Oh, okay. Oh, this is funny. My opponent's trying to play a Ponziani against a Petrov. So I could transpose into Ponziani. But I can also take the pawn and... Yeah, it's probably a good version for black. Okay, I think this will be my last game of the tournament. And this game might not even count for the tournament. A half hour left. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen this move too often. I've probably seen it in like... Yeah, in amateur games where White's fixated on, on playing Ponziani, but kind of doesn't realize that the e4 pawn's attacked. Still goes for d4, so it's some type of gambit now. I mean, I, I was going for the Stafford gambit, but it's White who's gambiting. Yeah, I, I do want to analyze that previous game. I mean... We'll see at exactly what moment my opponent uh, missed the chance to win. Okay, so defending the knight, preparing bishop c5. Bishop c5, unfortunately, unfortunately runs into queen e5, and I'm not winning anything. I mean, even queen takes g7. Uh, but I do have knight c6 here, which attacks the queen, prevents queen e5. Probably see this or this. Thank you for the great content and having the heart of a teacher. Oh, thank you, Sambaba Benji. Happy 20 months. Bishop b5 I actually kind of forgot about. So here, I have a choice to make. Like, I could go for this. I lose g7. I take f2, probably. The king will move. I play rook f8, or no, queen f6 wouldn't work. I mean, a safer option. Actually, if here, then there's takes. Go weird position here. Yeah, I don't think bishop c5 works because of queen digs g7. I don't think I want to go into the sign with... Bishop f2 and then rook f8. Just seems like my king's more of a target. So with that in mind, what to do? Bishop e6. Bishop e6 castling. Yeah, actually, bishop e6 looks fine. There is a world where maybe I castle queenside. And yeah, with this, I'm just trying to, to develop. Like this bishop's tied down for now. Ideally, I'd like to just sack the pawn and use the G file, but that's hard to actually make work. Maybe I'll go for a6 at some point. I have the queen stays here, and I play a6. The bishop will have to take. And the plan might just be to play c5 eventually and kick the queen away. 
and then develop the bishop. I really have not been looking at chat so closely for the last maybe like 20 minutes ish. For the end of the most of the end of the last game, I was not looking over. Some discussion about semicolons. Okay, I don't think I've missed so much. Chat says, don't look at chat. Okay. Sometimes chat is good at providing, I guess, some life advice. If queen took on g7, could you have not taken with the bishop? Oh, yeah, I was analyzing lines where I, I move my bishop. Hey, Eric, and unfortunately, yeah, I you can't take back. I remember you talking about a QGD course you were developing a while back. Is that still being written? Thanks. Uh, yes, it's still under under construction in progress. When I initially started, I underestimated like how much work is actually involved, and I want to make sure it's like a a good quality product. So, I've made a lot of progress, but there's more more to do. Um, if I play c5, there's queen a4 check. But here I have bishop c5. I've had this move for the last several moves, but I think now it's um, it's actually working. Because there's no queen takes g7 to counterattack. This move doesn't work, so I'll take and then I mean, take on f2. Win a lot of material. And... Okay, so we will see this. It's a queen trade, but I can take on f2 with check and then recapture the knight. It's so tempting to play d4. Oh man. Oh, but d4, there's knight takes. I was thinking I... um. I would threaten mate. I should just take the knight. I mean, I'm daydreaming about like bishop here and mating, but white's too likely to play this move. So yeah, I'll just take the knight. And it's nice not being down a queen. Really suffered so much that last game. Yeah, so knight d2 is played, and we'll save the bishop. Leaving tension between the knights. If we do trade, then maybe the bishop can come here. Or the rook can come in. There probably wasn't too much reason to castle there, but... Um, I guess the main reason was really to get the rook in. I don't really need to worry about king safety. Okay, so yeah, b4, maybe going for this stuff. Um, I'll play d4. I'll try and open up the center. Again, in bishop c4, rook e8. I mean, the goal here is to try and really just try and create the mating net. Like after king e1, rook e8. It already feels very close to force mate. Knight c3. Also knight f2. I don't see force mate, but okay, I can win the rook. Okay. Okay, so now I'm not uh, I'm not immediately rejoining the tournament. I'm clicking pause. So I'm officially paused. And yeah, let, let's analyze this uh a super long crazy fight. I guess the engine already did its analysis. Black was was winning 
but as we see, sometimes chess is not not as simple as it seems. So I was better out of the opening. The a6 was maybe a little bit slow. Um, perhaps I could have, yeah, maybe I could have played that four, that four move. Yeah, because I have three box f pawn. Wow, so black was already like for choice pretty early on. But then, yeah, then it was like fine. Like with the trade. Yeah, for not the best move. I really just self destructed here, like queen e5. I based this off of like a, a faulty calculation. Rook e1 was really bad. I would have had to move the queen another time. My kudos to my opponent for, for finding it. And then I think they played really well, like the next so many moves. Um, is there eval bar? I have the engine turned on, so you can see the evaluation here. I guess the eval bar, yeah. Evaluation gauge, I guess. So very much in Black's favor. Oh, but guys, the, the comment in chat was from Christomer asking uh, evil bar. I'm not sure how evil this bar is. Maybe now it's kind of evil saying that I'm not, not doing well. But yeah, gradually the, the bar gets less evil. Okay, so I lost my queen. Yeah, the sequence with King G, I think was was quite good. I want to show there was a really beautiful line for black, which I did not allow. Like I'm, I'm happy that I, I didn't uh, allow it because I was close to. Going forward from here, yeah, G five was a really good move, because otherwise, like I was probably threatening Rook, B eight, and then it's so easy for the king to get stuck. But this gave the king a uh, some extra room. I went for d5. And around here, I thought I was just going to lose, despite having two pawns like this. I mean, black was threatening to check and then check and then win the pawn, so try to ensure the queen can't check from h4. It could check from c5, though. Maybe this is the way to go. h5 was played, which was also fine. So in this position, the move I really wanted to play was rook b4. And the reason why I didn't play it, actually, I'll, I'll leave it up to Twitch chat. Maybe maybe some people like in the moment um, could figure out why. I wonder if anyone like mentioned it in chat because I was not looking at chat at all at this point. But black to move. There might be multiple ways to win, but I'm pretty sure there's a, like a, a nice way to win here. Yeah, black can sacrifice a queen. Queen digs b4, like incredible. And even though I have like pawns which are, that would seem promising to queen, the problem is whatever I take back with, it's impossible to stop the resulting pass pawn. Like c3, bishop support c2, I don't have bishop f5. And I'm not in time to queen because black queens with check. And then we'll just play something to prevent pawn d8. And same thing with uh, a takes b4. There's this. I'm not in time to take the pawn because my pawn's in the way. And again, if I push, black's just faster. So I wanted to play this move to prevent queen a3 and attack these pawns. But I figured that my opponent would, would very likely find this. But... Um, and I was close to playing it because I didn't see anything else that would really give me chances, but I played rook a2, at least defending. The problem was that black, yeah, black still wins e5. Now black could have gone for, actually this was fine. Yeah, yeah, black just wins e5 pawn. 
But then it was still tricky because I had this construction with the rook defending, rook defended by the pawn and the rook supporting the d-pawn. And there were tricks here that, like, if black takes on a3, after pawn d6, like, it might not be winning here for black. Because the pawn's really, really strong. Oh, but maybe it is because there's this move. I would have to play this. Yeah, this would get weird. I don't know what's happening here. Black should be winning somehow like this. And the way to win might be to have a few more queens on the board. Is black winning? Ah, black can just check and then blockade and then push. So anyway, let's get to the point. And this was all fine. I think probably black should have just put the king on d8 and then look to take the pawn. And that's what I was expecting when the king was walking this way. I thought it was going to walk to the d-file, but it walked to the king's side. And then, yeah, then after the trade of bishops, it was less simple. The king still found its way to d8. It's still winning for black, but I was able to take the pawn. Black wasn't in time to take because I have the pin. Okay, it's engine says there's like there's various moves. H3 may be best. As we saw later in the game, I, I kept my pawn and had the fortress. After queen b5, rook b4. Yeah, so here, this was a the crucial mistake. It allowed me to take the final black pawn on a4. Um, black had to make sure this pawn stays on the board. And yeah, there's a few ways to do that. Oh, queen c5. It's not an easy move to find. It's very devious though. The reason why this works is because, okay, black's threatening to take. If black can take on a3 and save a4, it's just winning because the pawn will queen. Um, and yeah, it takes advantage of the fact that I can't take on a4 without allowing this check and then this and then check and then the rook hangs. So black would have would have needed to use the geometry to essentially defend the pawn with tactics and then take this pawn. This is a similar idea. So if takes, there's this check to win the rook. And then queen b3 is coming. And yeah, it's, it is winning for black. So yeah, after, after queen takes c3, we got to a table-based position. And yeah, it's a table-based draw. As a rook just goes back and nothing to do. Okay, so hopefully some lessons to take away, not just from this game, but from all the games I played today. Uh, I guess I... Did I lose points overall? Hey, I gained two points out of the five games I played. Like, I, I lost a little bit from that game, but still up on rating for today. Reached a nice palindromic rating, 2442. Uh, I'm going to end it there. I think there's like... 13 minutes left of the tournament, but I'm tired. I'm hungry. Um, thanks everyone for watching. It was a fun stream. Thanks, huge things to everyone for all the support. It was like huge hype train earlier. A lot of people subbing for the first time and uh, resubbing for many months, gifting. So uh, I will be back.